The British royal family has been capturing our curiosity for centuries, and with the Queen's recent death, it seems that some secrets are finally coming out of the royal vault. Yes, there are just some secrets you can't take to the grave, apparently. In this video, we'll be going over some of the things about Queen Elizabeth II that didn't make the headlines. Here are some lesser-known facts about the late Queen, starting off with her secret handbag signals. As much of a social butterfly as the Queen was, she was a human, after all. Even though attending social gatherings was part of her service, she still had the desire to leave some of them. But being a royal figure, couldn't just get up and leave. That's straight up rude. And not very ladylike, of course. So she came up with a simple solution. While appearing on a special Antique Roadshow episode, her former footman, Ian Scott Hunter, spilled the beans. He worked as her footman for eight years, and during that time, he had picked up on her cues. Quite specifically, her cues related to leaving early. He claimed that if the queen wanted to retire early, she would take out lipstick from her handbag and put it on without a mirror. That specific signal meant that she wanted to leave. No wonder she was never seen in public without vibrant lipstick. As soon as the signal was given, her ladies would immediately start preparations for her exit. But that's not the only signal that she'd give using her handbag. Kirsten Miner, a royal critic on the Royal Report podcast, revealed another tidbit about the Queen's secret handbag signals. She claimed that whenever the Queen would move her handbag from one arm to another, she wanted one of her staff members to come and interrupt her. This might have come in handy during a lot of uncomfortable conversations. And if she wanted to leave immediately, she'd just lay her handbag flat on the ground. What else can we say besides we wish we had our own signals like that? Moving on to her driving skills. You might have seen a lot of pictures of the late queen driving her Range Rover with her iconic headscarf on. Those pictures always remind you that Britain's longest reigning monarch was just like any other gal. But unlike any other gal, she didn't have a driver's license. Yep, she didn't need a driver's license and was never issued one. Why, you might ask? Well, since every driver's license in the UK is issued in the sovereign's name, she being the sovereign herself didn't really need one. That made her the only person in the UK not to need a driver's license in order to drive. And boy, did she enjoy that privilege. When she was 18, she joined the Women's Auxiliary Territorial Service. This was basically the woman's branch of the British Army fighting in the Second World War. As part of her training, not only did she learn how to drive, but she learned all the basics of car mechanics and also learned how to drive a truck. She's been known as Princess Auto Mechanic ever since. Even though she did have her royal chauffeur, she liked to drive on her own from time to time. And she was a huge car nerd. She customized her cars with the ornament of a dog on the bonnet. One time, she even drove around Saudi Arabia's Abdullah bin Abdulaziz on the Scottish estate roads. Coming from a country where women weren't allowed to drive yet, Abdullah was quite shocked to be driven around by the queen herself. He even asked her to slow down at one point, following up with another fact that brings the queen down to earth. Just two years after the Second World War ended, Queen Elizabeth was set to marry her distant cousin, Prince Philip. Because Britain was still reeling from the aftermath of the war and rationing was still a major reality, they had to cut costs for the big wedding. Well, the queen decided to save money and material for her wedding dress. Everyone was still using ration cards for getting pieces of cloth at that time. And the queen wasn't exempted from that. But the British government allowed the queen to have 200 ration cards to make her iconic wedding dress. Her dress was designed by Norman Hartnell, a premier fashion designer in Britain at the time. The inspiration for the dress came from one of Sandro Botticelli's paintings called the Primavera. And it was handcrafted 
drafted with the help of 350 women. So she still used the perks of being part of royalty after all. When the general public found out that the queen was low on ration cards for her wedding dress, many women mailed her their own ration cards. As sweet as the gesture was, she had to mail them back because, well, it's illegal to use someone else's rations. And in three months, her wedding dress was finally complete. The queen only got to try it on the day of her wedding. That's how laid back she was. Or maybe she just really trusted her design team. Either way, the dress was a major success and was put on display at a fashion exhibit at Buckingham Palace. Moving on to Queen Elizabeth's pet names. Passing away at the age of 96, she had gathered quite a lot of names for herself. While the British public had to refer to her as Her Majesty or Ma'am, her family members had permission to call her by other cute names. The cutest of them all is Lilibet. The nickname Lilibet came along when she was just a young child and struggled to pronounce her own name. She could only say Lilibet instead of Elizabeth, so that's what her family started calling her. She even signed her mother's funeral wreath with her pet name Lilibet, and Prince Harry and his wife loved the name so much that they named their daughter Lilibet after her great-grandmother. How sweet is that? Her doting late husband, Prince Philip, also had many pet names for her, but the one that was confirmed by a royal correspondent was Cabbage. He had called the Queen Cabbage many times around the house. We don't know what's the inside joke there, but we're sure it's quite heartwarming. Apart from that, her grandsons also had nicknames for her. They both sometimes referred to her as Gan Gan, quite specifically Prince William, because he couldn't say Grandma or Granny as a toddler. He also had a special nickname for her that only he used, which was Gary, which is quite adorable. We wonder if her great-grandchildren also used those pet names for her. Following up with the Queen's Corgis. Everyone's aware of the late Queen's obsession with her dogs, but just how many dogs did she own? Well, she loved dogs, but not just any dogs, she loved Corgis, a particular breed of dog that's known for tiny legs and big pointed ears. The Queen loved these adorable creatures so much that she owned a total of 30 Corgis in her lifetime. Her first royal Corgi was Dookie, which she got back in 1933, and her last one died in 2018. Since then, she didn't want any of her Corgis to outlive her, so she didn't get any new ones. But she did get two Corgis, Mick and Sandy. What are Dorgies, you ask? Well, they're a crossbreed between a Dachshund and Corgi that the Queen herself invented. Yes, amongst her many achievements, she also invented a new dog breed. Finally, the late Queen didn't attend school. This may not be a surprise to some, but Queen Elizabeth didn't go to school, as she was homeschooled all her life. She, along with her sister, Princess Margaret, were the last royal family members to be homeschooled in a traditional manner. But that doesn't mean she wasn't taught all her necessary subjects. She studied a selection of things, which included constitutional history. She also learned French from her native-speaking governess. This is why her French was known to be quite eloquent. Apart from that, she was quite athletic and took lessons in swimming, horse riding, and even music and singing. But being homeschooled meant she couldn't socialize with girls her age. So to fix that, a special Girl Scout company was designed for her, where she could socialize with many girls. All of these girls were children of the employees at Buckingham Palace. Wrapping up with plans for her death, even though she passed away in 2022, the preparations for her funeral had been in the works since the 1960s. Having faced the sudden deaths of British monarchs in the past, Britain didn't want to be underprepared for the Queen's death, so they began working on what was known as Operation London Bridge. It had details of all the things that would need to be done if the Queen passed away, but because the Queen died at Balmoral Castle in Scotland, Another operation, known as Operation Unicorn, was employed, which involves sending her back to London by train. That's a wrap for this video. What's the most surprising fact about the Queen? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.